Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's episode. It is a Monday, which means that our store is closed. We're closed Sundays and Mondays because I need to get stuff done on those days, like today. We have Josh coming back, um, and if you recall last week, he helped put in a bunch of shelves in the shop. We, when I want to say we, I guess it's myself and my split personality, decided that um, I could stand some other shelves up at the front here where all the candy was, uh, because it was, I don't know, it was kind of getting stacked up weird. So I want to do another small shelf like this just below, and then another one so I can put kind of all my jars and candy kind of nice and tidy on there. So cleared that off. Josh has run out to get some supplies. Uh, of course, what that means is that in the meantime, it has piled up all over my counter because I had nowhere to put all this stuff again. <laughs> and I cleared off the uh, shelf behind the till there too, because we're going to try and reorganize and make things look better. While I'm waiting for Josh to get back though, um, and work on the shelves, I have a whole bunch of stuff in the back of my vehicle because I went on an adventure yesterday, went on a pick, um, and picked up some cool things. So we'll do a little unboxing and uh, go and see what we got. Let's go check it out. Josh is back. What's up? Oh, I was just mentioning that you have a back and a front. But <laughs> Dude, I do. <laughs> see, there it is. Uh, but Josh is back, uh, making shelves, staining stuff, getting things ready. And yeah, just when you thought you were done, I call you back. It's yeah. like the cop that retires on the cop show and they're like, just one more gig before you retire. Except you probably won't die at the end of this episode. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna let you work on that. I'm gonna go see what's in the back of my car. I have to cross the road. I didn't have anywhere to park. Go front. Oh, I guess I do now. Josh's truck is 10 miles long. I wanted to give him lots of room. Okay, let's see what's in the back. This was a pick from the other day. Oh boy. You know, you're constantly getting rid of stuff and uh, constantly buying. And so you look like basically you're living out of your vehicle sometimes. Uh, okay, where am I gonna start? A lot of these die cast cars are gonna be going to auction because they're kind of just mediocre. They're in fine shape and everything, but um, they're nothing I really want to bring in the shop, but they were there. They were at somebody's house and they were cheap. So I picked them up. Um, this is kind of cool. That's a tube tester. There's always somebody looking for tube testers. Don't ask why. Well, I guess you can ask why because they're probably fixing radios <laughs> or TVs. So I can always sell a tube tester. Uh, we've got some violins, a xylophone, but what I wanted to get to was this big box that was underneath here because it's full of all kinds of neat small stuff. So I'm going to, uh, pile a couple of these things in the shop and then come back for this guy. So here I am bringing in some mid-century modern lamps, which are really cool right here. Always can sell these guys, but I just narrowly avoided a catastrophe. We heat with a little, uh, it's a gas stove, like a gas fireplace in the back room here. It's cool, it's neat. We don't put anything too close to it because it's a fireplace. However, when I came in this morning, somebody had moved this picture that was by the pinball machine against it. And you can see from the back, um, there's some little black marks on here. It's still warm. It has chlor chloroplast or uh, plastic on the back of it. My store could have gone up in flames had we not come in today. So good thing we came in today and avoided catastrophe. Um, so we put it in basically so that at the end of the night, Sean double checks to make sure there's nothing in front of that stove because another day of it sitting there could have been a big problem. Okay, violin. This case is a 1950s Harmony lap steel guitar. Good uh, country vibes or Hawaiian sounds coming off of that. Think uh, Meli Kaliki Maka, and you've got uh, the right kind of sound for this guitar. Uh, put that in the showcase with the other stuff. Just about got things emptied out. And with that, I think we've got 
our extra shelves in place. It's looking good, Josh. Good. Glad you like it. I do like it. And uh, pretty soon I'll have a place to put all of this. The idea was now that there's extra shelves here, you know how shelves are often handy. Um, we spaced them out so that we can put two layers of jars and I can fill that all up with jars. That'll be a tomorrow project because uh, this has to dry before I really start loading it up. But I am grateful to have some extra shelves. And then um, the smaller shelf here will be, we'll move the tea down there and then I can put, you know, maybe bring the coffee down a little bit. It's great. Oh, I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to merchandising my store tomorrow morning, which is a good thing. So thank you very much for doing that for me. No worries. There, the shelves are in place. Now I've got my candy all organized. Just have to get my tea all set up. But that'll be much easier for the kids to shop and a much better presentation than having stuff all stacked before. Ah, but I forgot, I still have to get that box out of the back of my car. All right, here is the box. This is a part of an estate. This was three generations worth of collecting um and sometimes it's not even collecting sometimes it's just you know things get old and get passed down this was a cool little set i've had these ashtrays many times before these are your good old goodyear tire ashtray you know probably from the 1940s or so and it's nice it's got the original um ashtray insert in there but what you don't often find is the matching pen holder again firestone gum dipped pen holder for your fancy pen and look it actually fits just perfectly right inside there i don't know if that was intentional or not but i've never ever had that before it was just such a cool thing did not want to pass that up uh, surprisingly this can is still full of oil even though it's got the big dent on it unfortunately that dent is going to take away from the value there are people who can uh you know re-roll them drain the oil out and fix them up but you know old oil cans do sell people put them in their garages on display so I figured that was worth at least picking up. Look at the dust on this radio. You can tell that's been sitting around for some time. Texaco home lubricant. This was a neat novelty lighter. It looks like a putter. Or I shouldn't say a putter, a uh, driving wedge. Um, but, you know, if you're into golfing or you collect vintage lighters, novelty lighters like this are kind of cool. So that was a nice little find. Uh, box full. Let's see here. Box full with the vintage microphone. An old A static. You got an old mic stand that probably looked really great on top of it um, for music and recording. These people were musicians, so there was a lot of interesting stuff. Lots of old books. Uh, Lord Tennyson's poems. Some of these go back to the late 1800s. Most are from the 1920s. This I picked up. It's a massive blue ribbon cookbook. I'm not sure the exact year this goes back to, but I'm gonna guess it's probably from the 1920s or so. And they they um, measured things different. You know, it would be pinches or, oh, 1907, okay. So this is a 1907. Oh, and there's all sorts of little recipes mixed in there too. Let's see, cornstarch pudding, iced fruit, jelly mold with grapes. They sure like their jellies back then. Everything was in jelly. I always think of uh, Christmas vacation when the cat food is mixed in with the jelly. But I'm sure there's gonna be some interesting uh, recipes in there. I might hand this over to Melissa for a little bit and see if she wants to make some things out of it and give it a try. Um, this was a cool piece. I could tell from the outside, Tudor. It's a Canadian watch. Um, Tudor is basically the same watch as a Rolex. Um, well, similar. See, there you go, Tudor by Rolex. Um, this model is a Oyster Princess, so it's an automatic watch, and uh, it's ticking away, they're just fine. The problem is, um, the cr it needs a good cleaning, for starters, but the uh, threads on the crown have been stripped a little bit, so it needs a new crown or a new tube, uh, but a good working condition watch. That ought to clean up very nicely, and the fact that it's, um, you know, seems to be uh, um, working properly is a good bonus right there. So a little, uh, basically, Tudor Rolex mixed in with a lot. And let's see. Battleships, Battles of the Peninsular War. It's got a little bit of uh, water damage on it, but 
nice military history book. And uh, a lot of these early battles were chronicled and then put into book form like this so people can read about each and every battle. But if you're into military history, a book like that is um, quite a good thing to have so you can read up on all the different battles that took place. The obvious thing that's right here, this is a military doll. These were sold during wartime. And it's got the, uh, I would say that, that looks like a uh, British uniform almost, but can't, can't be certain. It looks like he was a pilot. He had wings on him. But nice early piece of uh, military and toy history to get a little doll like that. He looks very stoic. He's got a stiff upper lip as he's marching along. So I'll set these pieces over here. Put those together. And let's see an old radio, an old Zenith radio. Needs some good cleaning. A massive book on television and radio repair. Like a really early book on repairing the first types of TVs. This is a tabletop. It looks like a tiny little gun. In fact, it's a lighter. Again, novelty lighters. Always have a market for those. And that would just sit on your table and say, oh, you want to light your cigar or cigarette? You just pick up the little gun there, pull the trigger, and whoosh, away you go. Fun little novelty piece. Oh, all these books will have to go through as well. You, you hope that you get, you know, um, <laughs> something interesting. I, I look at... Uh, this is about uh, the Scottish chiefs. Sex, marriage, and birth control. It's odd that they put it in that order, you think. Oh, here's another good one. Be married and like it. I feel like that's the same exact advice that Dave gave me when I married Melissa. Just be married and like it. <laughs> and I do. But it's a funny title for a book. Sometimes uh, quirky little books like that do find uh, um, an easy buyer because they're just, you know, they're fun. Nice little gag gift or a thing to have sitting on your shelf. Here's a neat home cyclopedia. What's it on? Well, it's Dr. Foot. There he is, Dr. Foot. And uh, he's giving advice. It's the uh, medic, uh, popular medical, social, and sexual science. I can tell you which one's more popular than the others. Would you trust him to give you the talk? Maybe. I don't know. He signed his book and apparently it was available in all sorts of different languages. 1912 this date's from. So it's plain talk on how the body works and, you know, uh, basically how to take care of yourself. Uh, and is that a chastity belt? It almost looks like. Nope. Dr. Potts spring stem press area. Boy, you know, the, the stuff that they were using back in those days, you know, we look at it now and it's so primitive, but... Maybe Dr. Foot had a few good nuggets of information in there. Who knows? This is a selection of nice vintage fountain pens. There's a uh, pen and pencil matching set. This nice sort of swirly look. If you, By the way, if you're at home and you have old pens like this, like old Waterman, there are collectors for them. People buy them. They rebuild them. Uh, heck, I buy them. Um, Old vintage fountain pens and mechanical pencils do still have collector value, so make sure to look around your house and see what you have. You can always identify a fountain pen. It generally has that little draw lever to draw the ink in on the side. That's a sign you've got a fountain pen on your hands. This is unusual. This is not a solid gold ring. It's gold plated, but it's from Edmonton Klondike days. This could go back, you know, a number of years. Um, uh, we don't even call it Klondike days here anymore. Basically, it's our exposition, our, our fair. And this is a tiny little, again, novelty lighter, a little bit sassy. She's covered up with her towel. So this would have been a little pocket lighter. Maybe you'd take it to the beach, who knows. But what was really curious and what was really neat was what was in this box right here. Although this is a small little box, it is full of military cap badges and buttons. So there's the uh, Canada uh, Mounted Overseas Rifles. These all came from the same family that served in different wings of the military. So there's the Australian Commonwealth Military Forces. Uh, there's the Egyptian East Lancashire cap badge. That's an unusual one. It's got the Sphinx right on the top of it. That, that's going back um, a fair ways. There's 4th Battalion Canada. This is uh, Edmonton, Alberta. The, let's see, what does that say? 
I must be blind. It says Sportsman's Battalion right there to the 202 out of Edmonton. A nice local piece. So each and every one of these, you know, uh, collar dogs, cap badges, pins, all have a uh, good value depending upon what branch it was. Some are more common than others. And, uh, you know, you hope that you find a collector who's going to like these sort of things and put them back into, uh, into a nice collection somewhere. So we'll keep these guys aside and, uh, Hopefully I'll be able to find a home, at least for some of the military stuff. And I've got some sorting to do, some books to put away. Good thing I've got lots of shelves to put stuff on. I was having a look at this Astatic microphone in here. It's a T3 model and it's an earlier one. And it's hard, always hard to tell whether this is from the 1950s or 60s because they made them throughout. I would say this one's a little bit older, mainly based on the fact that I was looking at the newspaper it was packed in and it was packed in 1956. So if you're packing something up in 56 and you're not using it since, I'm guessing it's from at least around that time. Really good shape though. It's gonna shine up like mint. I'm sure this would be a nice microphone. I can't, I don't recall if it's a crystal mic or not, but people do use these for recording still. I just need to get a little mic stand for it and I'll be all set. <laughs> Here I am putting antiques away. I've got Hans and actually there's three Hans, one Zenobia. <laughs> <laughs> good day, good day. Love yeah, <laughs> except your your hair isn't as curly as that picture. That's false advertising. Oh, sorry. I'll have to get a perm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no hair. No. <laughs> so, what are you guys doing in town? Well, we uh, we're putting down subfloor in the uh, musician's house, and we got the tiling done up uh, yesterday. No. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday we finished. Well, we just got a little bit more to do. Oh, okay, so you're doing some renos at the musician's house. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So I'm in there visiting with Hans and Zenobia, and who stops in? My best friend from junior high school, Jason, who you might remember from the polishing the Airstream trailer video from, from years gone by. So Jason, we have known each other since we were what? Like 13, 14, something like about that? there. Yeah, about that. So what, what do you remember as being the first thing that we worked on together? Bicycles and motorbikes. Yeah. Uh, do you remember what type of bicycle I was working on? I think it was a Peugeot or yeah. something like that. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> you have like Rain Man's memory when it comes to stuff. It was a Peugeot bicycle that I bought at auction for like 10 bucks. It was an old Peugeot race bike and I was spray painting it black and trying to get it fixed up. Um, and you were always the guy with the cool bikes. You had a fancy motorcycle with Marvin the Martian on the side. Long ago, yes. Long ago, probably the only thing you've ever sold. Uh, probably. You kept pretty much everything else. Yep. So now that we have good weather, I get some Jason visits, which is nice. Uh, <laughs> yes, you do. I'm gonna have to bring you on some uh, an adventure with me so we can go and do something. We shall. Okay. All right. Well, let's head in the shop. Let me show you around. All right. See him or meet him because I never got to go to any of the picks. That's right. Yeah. You never. You're always working. Yes. And so you've never actually met Hans and Zenobia before. Oh, this is the first time. Yeah. See, if you weren't working as much, you would be on my channel like all the time, pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> So that's it, another busy day. I got a cookbook for Melissa, um, some more treasures for the store, and I've got shelves. And I have to tell you, since I put the extra shelves into the candy counter, candy's been flying off of those shelves. Um, not because they're not sturdy and things are falling off, but because people can see it better and it's selling really well. So thanks to Josh. Uh, I'm sure we'll see my friend Jason appear in some more videos, hopefully this summer. Um, and you guys have a wonderful night. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.